Guys, Daniel here again. Welcome to another videos of our tutorials uh, in our tutorial series. In these videos, though, I will um, share with you in depth of our integration with Google NLP uh, API. Um, in short, that stands for Google Natural Language Processing API. So the reason why we chose to do this because this laid into our belief um, of the futures of SEO in the next five to ten years. Um, so this service was opened by Google in, I think, about two, three years ago. And this is the first time ever we are able to access and to see what Google bot would see when they read through a certain piece of content. Right. So this service essentially to sh is to show you that when a, when a bot from Google go into your content, they will scan through your, 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 uh, your piece of, of content and they will try to understand the meaning that you try to convey. The faster they understand the meaning and the context behind the things that you write, the easier and the faster it is for them to organize that content and match it with the search uh, keyword that uh, the keyword that your users search. So remember when uh, in the in the first videos of our recommended workflows, I was sharing with you about the relationship in Google economy. And Google essentially work as an economy, and their job is to match the de between demand and supply. Uh, in this relationship, sub the demand is represented by the keyword that users search. They have a demand, so they search for that keyword. So they want to know about the information of that keyword. And the supply end are you and me and people who create websites, people who provide goods and services and product and information and knowledge that would fit with those of the demand. So Google's job, I mean, the, the, the vitality of Google is their ability to match this demand with the correct and corresponding supplier, right? And they do this by looking for different signals. And this kind of signal change over time as they become better and smarter and more intelligent, right? Um, before 2012, for example, um, people uh, Google treat this signal as uh, a string of information, not like things or people or human because there's no context or content. Because Google was still a search engine and they are very much acting as just a, a queries of signal. Like uh, uh, if you look for a keyword, let's say before 2012, right? Uh, if the user search for a queries, let's say a keyword, Google as a platform will return to you every single article that contained that keyword. That's it. Because they don't understand what that keyword actually mean. They just know that they need to look for exact same information in the whole database that they have and send it to the user itself. So after 2012 and begin 2013, that is the beginning of the Hummingbird series. And in Hummingbird update, Google start to introduce this new concept called knowledge graph. And they realize one thing, everything has its meaning, right? And everything has a relationship with other things. For example, if an user search for Steve job, they, they will not only want to know all the article that contain the word Steve job, they will also want to know about all the related uh, things or, or person or organization that relate to that, uh, that word. For example, Steve Jobs, it would be uh, Tim Cook, it would be MacBook, it would be Apple, it would be John Ivey. So those are what constitute a knowledge graph of a certain keyword, right? And Google continue to build on this. Uh, up, up until 2018, and that's where they introduced BERT, BERT. And the, the introduction of BERT really changed and transformed the way search engines was able to understand and analyze the context and meaning behind a, a certain website, right? So in 2012, you just put a bunch of keywords in your content, and the more keywords you have, the likelier the chance that you will be able to get on top and also link building, right? You just put a lot of backlinks in it. doesn't matter what backlink is about. doesn't matter how quality of the backlink is. You just get on top because that's the way Google measure. They use that kind of signal. The signal back then, it was link building and keyword. But slowly, it's no longer that. And you can see the diminishing power of link building and 
the keyword sort of like just mashing them together, you know, it no longer work simply because Google gets smarter. They not only understand what a piece of content, a quality piece of content should look like, but they also understand the meaning behind that content so that they can match that with the user better. So come back to the knowledge graph, right? They, they will call this knowledge graph as entities map. So Steve Jobs is one entity. So if a an user search for entity like Steve Jobs, Google will show you relating entities. And Steve Jobs is a very strong entity because it re retained a lot of information, knowledge, and about about them. Let's you let's say you search for Daniel Nguyen, my name. Um, you're not going to see a lot of entities related to me besides maybe Writer Zen, maybe my own company, maybe some of the things I do on social media. But on Steve Jobs, it's very clear there's a entities, a map entities that relate to Steve Jobs. So when you search for Steve Jobs, it will actually show you relating people like Tim Cook or John Ivey or organization that Steve Jobs run. That's how Google runs their search engine. Uh, that's how search engine Google runs nowadays. And we don't know how Google organized this map of entities until 2018. And that is when Google start opening up to the world one of the service and it's called Google NLP API. And with this API, for the first time ever, we are able to see what Google bot would see when they read through your content. And it's fascinating to us because for the first time, we know now that if you write a piece of content, it's not enough that you structure it in a well-intended and SEO-optimized manner. It's not enough that you include the keyword that you try to communicate that you will put it on and it's not enough that you just write a piece of content that is valuable and good and quality for the end user you also need to know that what entities you should include when you write a certain piece of content relate to the keyword that you write let's say you try to write an article about steve job it would be a lot better and easier for google bot to understand your piece of content by including entities like tim cook including entities like Apple or MacBook or John Ivey, for example. When you look through all of that and you see there is a relational with the entities, you help Google, but when they go in, they'll see right away that what you're trying to convey. And that is what Google NLP API does. Um, that's the first thing, actually. The second thing they will provide to you is they will provide to you what they consider as a sentiment of the context of the the, the, the piece of writing that you, you wrote, right? So unlike human, when we read certain paragraph or content, instantly we'll be able to understand the sentiment behind that, what kind of, some keywords are appearing more negative rather than, ne uh, than positive. Some keywords are very much neutral in terms of sense, uh, more news uh, anchor type of, 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 of sentiment. You, you will right away be able to understand that because that's how our brain works. We are very familiarized with sentiments. But in terms of for Google, the only way for them to do that is through an algorithm. And that is through their natural language processing algorithm. And they do that and they will be able to provide you right away with the kind of, um, the kind of sentiment where the Google bot go into a certain website, they will be able to provide you with a sentiment that they analyze for you. And by showing that, you will be able to see, okay, the top 20 competitors, what sentiment are they generally carry? If they generally carry this positive sentiment, maybe you should really consider to write your piece of content also in the same sentiment because you don't want to go against that, uh, against that, 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 that trend. You're going against that trend, you just make Google bot feeling a bit more confused. For example, I mean, it's just another thing that you can apply. It. Um, so those are the two main and key things you can you can get um, understand from Google uh, NLP API. In short, they helped you first of all show you what are the entities that you should include in your content so that Google bot when they scan through your website, they'll be able to understand the the, the context and meaning you try to convey faster, more effective. And that way they will match, they will be able to match your content to the corresponding keyword a lot easier. Secondly, that will be, they will provide you with the sentiment, the general sentiment of all the top 20 competitors. And from there, you'll be able to build your content similarly and align very well with those content to make uh, Googlebot feel familiarized with, uh, with a, a similar trend. Okay. 
So those are the introduction of uh, content of Google NLP. Uh, let's go into how it was integrated into our tool. First of all, in the project management bar dashboard, simply click on add article. You'll be able to guide into one of the opening um, format. And from there, you just turn on the uh, Google NLP uh, switch. In current legal NLP API service only support English, Spanish, and Japanese. Um, not sure why they haven't support other language, but I'm sure they are coming into plan uh, soon. Um, so we will. So with whatever language that is not that, we will disable the button. Also, each of the article in order to optimize the article itself, it will cost you three uh, NLP credits, right? Um, in order for you to get the credits, you simply go on to the corner right here, click on pricing. Uh, it will lead you to a page where you do one-time credit and you'll see Google NLP credit available for you to, to buy right here. All right, go back to the tool. Um, as you can see, I already have a nutrition blend article available and NLP is available here. Click on it. And um, it Google NLP will be integrated into two steps in our in our um, our tool. The first is outline to use, and in outline to use, you will see the, there's the new columns that appear here, and this is the sentiment columns. In the sentiment columns, you will be able to see uh, what Google bots see, and after they analyze the content of each of this of of this uh, website. So the general sentiment, overall sentiment here, um, is neutral. So our suggestion is whatever you craft of your content is a good rule of thumb to maintain your uh, content a neutral uh, sentiment, right? Second things, let's go into uh, keyword to include. Oh, uh, one more thing. I think you can see this. Yeah. Okay, let's go into keyword to include. Uh, beside the two tab over here in which I already went to details of uh, the tutorial in our keyword to include videos, you can access from our tutorial library here. Um, there will be a third tab and that is Google NLP entities. In Google NLP entities, this is, uh, this is where we will provide you with every single entities that we convey, uh, we extract from the top 20 competitors website. So for nutrition plan, these are all of the entities that was uh, used and well that has in in the top 20 competitors so go NLP bot go into each of the content uh, each of the website they extract all this entity and we provide it and show you right here click on any of this entity you'll be able to see how they were used in those content um, right here um, we'll show you general usage um, the amount of usage that we suggest you should have in included in your to include in your content um, the salient scoring so the salient scoring is the scoring in which is determined the importance of this entity to the whole of the content. So this eating plan is very it has a quite high of a salient score, and therefore it play a very important role of of helping Google Bot to understand what the content about nutrition plan is about, right? There's two views here you can access. First is total entities. This is a list of every single entities that we extract from uh, the top 20 computers. The second view is sub view. This is where you can actually look through each of the content here. Click on it and we'll show you in each of the website, right? Uh, what is the, each of the computer, what are the list of the entity that you could see from here? So these are all the list of the entities whatever you feel like you it will support pick pick entity when you pick an entities make sure that the entities you pick support the outlines that you build in step one right because it's all about the story and the theme so in step one you already chose um a theme of how you want to approach your content in step two you already pick on the keyword from competitor keywords and opportunity keyword that support your content and lastly Pick entities also to support your content. So entities will become almost like a knowledge graph that when Googlebot go in there, they will scan not only the keyword, but also all the terms and the entities that you include. And when they scan through entity right away, they understand that, wow, if you talk about nutrition plan, you should have this keyword meal plan, you should have protein, you have eating habits, you should have fat or diet plan, uh, 
in that content. Having it just help guide Googlebot a lot easier for them to see what you're trying to write about, right? And so you just go through and you look at different content. For example, Healthline is a great piece of content. It's a great source of information you can access and see. As you can see, they have a lot of their entities are really well put together. Diet plan, food intake, intermittent fasting, muscle mass. These, all of the entities belong to a different category of Google database and they have, they have a database for everything. And they would put all this under different categories of database here. And, um, oops, sorry. And Healthline does a very good job of categorizing them. So if you look on here, you will see some of the entities that's like one word, right? But if you click on Healthline, you'll see that most of them are keyword that makes sense, right? So that's why, I, I mean, to be honest, you look at it, I'm very 100% sure that the content come out from Healthline, which is one of the best as SEO optimized health website in the world right now. You can see that they, I can guarantee that they use Google NLP because you can see that the way they pick whatever entities that they have are very clear, very concise, very correct, you know, and that's how they get their content rank and sustain that ranking. Okay, so that is uh, essentially Google NLP integrations. Um, again, every entities or keyword that you pick should always follow um, the theme and the direction that you set in the outline to use, right? And remember, the more you spend, the more time you spend on your planning and structure, and you build a theme and you prepare, um, so that when Googlebot go into your site, they did their job so easily. They see you is so well optimized in terms of the way the content structure. You see that very clearly the keyword that you try to target, and they also see all the entities that you laid out throughout the whole content, and they also see the list of linking internal link and external link from your content making sure that you show them not only you refer you have different source of information but you have other relating information you want to show to users with a good content you gotta rank right so with that in mind i hope these videos help answer you um, why uh, google nlp integrations is a key successful factor in the future of SEO. And this is what we truly believe um, when it comes to content SEO uh, in 2020, uh, 22 onward. Thank you very much for listening in. I'll see you in our next videos.